Hey guys, Brandon Inman from PocketNow.com. Here we've got Derek Snyder, Senior Product Manager. Uh, he gave a presentation today for Mango, and Derek's going to tell us about Windows Phone 7, and I think Adam's going to get around back here to uh, get a better demo. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so with Mango, we wanted to focus in three key areas, communication, apps, and the internet. We think that there was a ton of work that could be done there beyond what phones do today. Um, so with communications, we added a bunch of new things into the People Hub, where now you can connect and share with people across different groups. So the ability to group together all of your friends. For instance, here I've got my New York City friends that show up and I've put them all together. I can see what's new for this group of people. I can see all the photos that I've posted and have tagged for all of these people. You always hang out, so it's kind of a nice thing to see. And then I also can do group communication. And we do this by integrating the most popular social networking and chat experiences, Facebook chat and Windows Live Messenger. So you can send off group messages just like that and it's just a really easy thing for people to do if they already are using those services. Uh, we do that with a new feature called Threads, um, which basically brings together all the different ways that you connect and share across all those different services. So here you'll notice a text, um, which I thought was a text that came in from Andrew, but in fact it was a Facebook message. And on the fly you can actually switch over to text or over to messenger, whatever the person's available on, so you can keep the conversation all together. So instead of going to separate apps, you have it all together. Um, with apps, we wanted to make sure that we were improving all of our app experiences, for instance, the Xbox Xbox Live Hub has uh, full avatar support in it. You have what applications. What are these, these lines on the side when you kind of flip through? Uh, well, when it first loads. When it first loads? Uh, what are you talking about? When there? See the lines pop up? In the yeah, that was a scroll. I think it's a scroll bar that was showing up initially and then going away. Pre-release software, you know. It's, your feedback is important, though. Um, and so you'll notice things here. We even have notifications that come in. We have, uh, you know, messages. The avatar interacts, and you can do interesting things with him. You can have your little avatar collectibles come in. We have all of our notifications. All that stuff comes in. So we wanted to take all the stuff that was in Xbox Live Extras, improve it, and then build it into the core of the experience. Let's see what the old one was like on there. Sure. sure. Yeah, the old one is... Uh, was really good for seeing your games, and when you see things like your avatar, it was a little bit more static. Here, you notice it's very interactive. It's showing me why I have messages come in, all that. Yeah, and on Windows Phone 7, you'd launch into a separate experience. So we thought we could do a little better. Um, we could see all of those messages come in. We could do a spotlight area where people get all sorts of uh, new notifications. And we actually improved uh, the caliber of games that we're going to have in Mango by offering some new ways for us to do multiplayer, and you'll see more updates about that later in the later Can we jump the into the browser to do a speed test versus sure. the old version? Yeah, sure. For that, I'm going to use this phone, actually. This phone has a newer build, oh, which it. we've been using for the thing. Yeah, what did you want to do? We might as well go to Pocket Now, but uh, scroll down to the bottom and we'll hit the desktop view. <laughs> okay, you want me to go desktop view? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, our internet connection is pretty pretty weak over here. All right, is it? That's, that's obviously very important. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll see what so, we can get. So, it'll be kind of... Well, kind of oh, it seems like it's okay. Uh, all, right, so all right, so we want to go desktop version? Yeah. yeah like, less than a bar. <laughs> got, a, got a big ad here. Yeah, got to kill See if they load it up. Let me try to fix this up a little bit. Yeah, those ads, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get those ads. You should uh, take this as a sign. It's uh, re... Nice. So browser bar on the bottom now. Much more yep. finger friendly. Yeah, we moved to the bottom so we can optimize the amount of real estate for everything else. And you can just pull it up with the familiar drawer that we have everywhere else. What's in there? Um, so here I'm getting the same ad that you're getting. Fantastic. Oh, terrific. Maybe this is not the best site to demo. The good thing is that uh, because it is the same rendering engine as the uh, the desktop, it's actually seeing it exactly the same. So it's presenting the ad as you would expect. You can move and then around. It's moving it so that you can Yeah, it's moving it. it so I can't uh, escape the ad. <laughs> well, click on a headline, quick. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I, I guess think... I guess I'm forced to go here. All right, why don't we do this on? Let's, do it, do it, do it. Uh, I, let's look at something like Boston.com, right? So Boston's actually a cool website because it's a new site that actually takes advantage of HTML5 videos, all that stuff that you would expect. Um, it gives you interesting news as well that's coming through. Um, so the page loads up. You get all that available right here. You'll notice that it brings in HTML5 video. All that stuff's available right here, so I can see it. And play it. So it really is the exact same browsing experience that you expect on your PC. It loads all that up right here. And you talk of flash support? Uh, no talk of flash support. We think that with HTML5. Touch it? Uh, this one I'd rather not, just because. Uh, this is just our yes, yes. <laughs> we got a few more demos today, and so I'm just trying to keep things reasonably uh, normal. Yeah. yeah. Derek, that's Paul Thorat. If you have. Oh, hey, Paul. How are you? Derek Snyder. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't introduce you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to make videos a lot.
that stuff in my ass. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have a lot of really old nitty gritty kind of specific questions around such things. Oh, nice. Are you doing sub calendar score, you know, non primary calendar score? Very good. Calendar is delegate kind of thing? No, you know, you know, Shane or Google. Oh, now we have the different calendars within the calendar. Correct, that's Yes. Right now, you only support different calendars. Jump to different apps. Are you supporting multiple calendars? Search bar is the same source. Not within, well, you can have multiple calendars by just adding more and more of them. So you can have multiple stage calendars, you can have multiple Gmail calendars. You can have not within the same source, okay. they'd have to be with different counts. Okay. Yeah. So which one do you want to see? How do you see who's on Messenger? Who's, who's online? Yeah, so if you want to see who's online, you can actually use uh, threads for that. So if I go into messaging here, you'll see that I'm signed in, and I can oh, pan yeah. over right inside of the messaging experience and see who's online. And that's for Facebook and it, it's Messenger. This is, yeah, exactly. This is mixing together Facebook and Live Messenger. So I can you know, start a conversation with my friend Jess here, and I can yeah, go ahead and switch that. Mango that's good. <laughs> yeah, it is, now, it is now Mango. That's correct. Yes, it's true. It's a very important change we made. Room, mango. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can see things here. Brian's available, and then I can go ahead and switch to Facebook, or I can switch to text can you send and so him a picture? Available. Yeah, if I'm on Messenger, absolutely. I can attach a picture. He's going to love this. I'm going to just use him as my demo donkey. So just like that, you can send a picture. Send that off. And the voice clip? Yep. Is that what that uh, this, is, this is actually voice dictation. Okay. Say your message. Yeah. And so I showed in the demo some voice dictation. Uh, the thing that I did not show is that it's actually really easy to start a voice dictation. So you can actually just press and hold the start button. And you can do all sorts of things. So um, if you press and hold start, uh, you have the ability, Microsoft stock. Can't Oops. Find that name in your Oops, hold on. This one actually has Wi-Fi connected up. I should get this one. Microsoft stock. Wow. Uh, ambient noise in here. Too loud, I think it's too loud, yeah. But anyways, you can do all sorts of things. You can say, you know, call Brandon Miniman. You can call, uh, get Microsoft stock quote. In here it's giving me a list of who to call. It's getting more specific. Can you play a song? Uh, yeah, you can play a song. You can also tell it to um, to text Andrew Maroney, and it will create a new text, and then you can dictate the text. Or email? Uh, no email, just for messaging. Just text. Yeah. Is there, in fast app searching, is there a way to force close a program like you get in iOS? Yeah, actually, the way it works is um, we, we don't want consumers to have to think about task management at all, actually. And so what we do is we basically have the back button be the thing. So if you, whenever you go back to the start, it loads that app into memory. And so if you just sit there and you just keep backing out, yeah, just then it's just, it's yeah, and don't think of it as closing as much as this, this hydration and dehydration, because we wanted to have these background agents that we run so that the app continues to get information, can get location, can push things to tiles, but at the same time did not have any deleterious effect on your battery life or performance. Yeah. So we think it's it's simple that way, and uh, people can switch around. And, and for the things you want to do, like you're in a text and you want to go back and check a phone number real quick or something like that, you can totally do that, and that's very easy. Great. This actually has my real work email, so I should probably take this one <laughs> off the table <laughs> before you see other things that are coming in Mango or something like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's that's basically it. I think you know, inside of uh, the search stuff, that's really the most interesting at least in terms of you know what we're doing to reorganize the web so that you can take action. All the local scout stuff that comes together, getting local scout for Tribeca, for instance, and having all of the places to eat and drink, see and do, and everything else around this area, having all that just come in. All my favorites. We're bringing more and more metadata together so people don't have to decide and go app by app or figure out different web pages to get all that different information. In the case when you were doing the map and then the shopping mall showed the different areas, how did that tie in? Is that from, from the web? Yeah, that comes from the web. So Bing's big thing is to scrape the web for information, so you don't have to go into all these different places. I mean, the canonical example is like you have to go to a website to find the Contact Us page just to get a phone number because it didn't get pulled out. Right. Not only do we that, but we give you the things that you actually want, which in this case is, you know, what are the upcoming shows at the Madison Square Garden? What are the, uh, you know, what are the stores as they appear inside the Manhattan Mall? And it's really cool. I mean, the problem with New York City is that you don't have a lot of malls. And so if you're in a more suburban area, you actually you find a lot of these public places that have these types of indoor maps. Um, as you zoom in, you just get to see all those right there. Do you have like a killer. street view? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, well, we had that thing anymore. in Windows Phone 7 where if you back out, you know, you have basically the, the normal road view and no, then I mean, like closer on the closer aerial. Uh, yeah, we don't have a, oh, you mean a street view, street view? No, we don't have that in, in this release. You can get in, 